Hey YouTube, it's Penny. Well, at the end of the October Crisis Part 4 video that I recently uploaded, I mentioned that I've heard the name Isabella several times in um, my dreams and visions, and I wondered if it might be re related to Queen Isabella of Spain, who is perhaps best known for the Spanish Inquisition and financing Christopher Columbus's 1492 voyage that led to the opening of the New World in America. So I wanted to share um, two of the dreams where I heard Isabella. So on December 24th, Christmas Eve in 2013, I dreamt um, of, of a woman who was getting married and she told me that all she wanted for a wedding gift was these expensive brand name black stockings, kind of like tights. And um, I went to shop for them and I couldn't remember the brand name, so I ended up buying her a less expensive off-brand um, pair of these stockings. Well, she told me that she wanted them stuffed, so I was filling them with crumpled up paper. And I woke up with the understanding that this dream is connected to stuffing stockings or stocking stuffers and hanging them by the chimney. So in prayer, two mornings later, um, I was asking Abba what the brand name of the stockings was because I knew that it was important. And I heard in the spirit, Isabella. And then I remembered, oh right, that's what it was. Okay, so on August 17th, uh, 2014, I had a vision of um, two couches that were facing one another in what looked to be an expensive hotel suite like this. You know, it's interesting about that photo is when I first typed into being images, expensive hotel suite, that's what came up. And I don't know if you caught it, but um, on the television, there's a, a James Bond movie playing. So that's why I decided to use that image because I've been shown James Bond several times in Dreams and Visions. Okay, so in this vision, Elizabeth Taylor was sitting on the couch facing me. And this is the, the image of her that I found that um, looked most like she did in the vision. So opposite her, with their backs to me, so I couldn't see their faces, was um, what I understood was an older Russian couple. Uh, Elizabeth was juggling three balls in the air in what appeared to me as an attempt to distract the Russians until it was time for her to make her exit. I understood the man was a retired opera singer and he was singing Elizabeth a song called Isabella. She looked over at the double doors, um, you know, to exit and enter the hotel suite. And she was watching um, as some sort of a clock that had numbers um, that are similar to those that you would find on like a, a combination lock clicked to the number or the time one zero colon zero zero colon zero zero and she knew that it was time for her to leave so I looked and that was the end of the, the vision I looked up six digit time calculations and learned that while it can denote the hour minute and second such as you know 10 o'clock a.m. or p.m. the military date time indicating midnight on the 10th day of the month is expressed as one zero colon zero zero colon zero zero and this caught my attention since Yom Kippur is on the 10th day of the month so the retired opera singer in the vision reminded me of the saying, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, even though it was a man singing in the vision. Um, so I decided to look up the history of where that phrase originated. It's a colloquialism, meaning that one should not presume to know the outcome of an event which is still in progress. The phrase is generally understood to be referencing the stereotypically overweight sopranos of grand opera, specifically in regards to the imagery of, I'm going to spell this out for you, G-O-T-T-E-R-D-A-M-M-E-R-U-N-G. Okay, so the last part of Richard Wagner's opera cycle. 
The soprano's aria lasts almost 20 minutes and leads directly to the end of the opera. As the, this particular um, God or Dam or Rung <laughs> is about the end of the world, in a very significant way, it is over when the fat lady sings. So the connection between Elizabeth and the Russian couple that I saw could be this. Under Peter the Great, Russia was proclaimed an empire in 1721 and became recognized as a world power. Peter's daughter, Elizabeth, was the Empress of Russia from 1741 until her death. She led the country into the two major European conflicts of her time. One was called the War of Austrian Succession and the other one was called the Seven Years War. I thought that was interesting. So, this Elizabeth Isabella connection also reminded me of um, the night of July 25th, 2014. I heard the word Libby over and over and over again during the night. And I was like, okay, 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 I'll write it down. Well, I've mentioned in other videos that Libby is my maternal grandfather's name. He was French. And I have another whole file on what I'm calling the French connection that I will include in an upcoming video. However, for, as far as connecting to this video, I looked at the meaning of the name Libby and what do you know? I got two different things. One, the first one says um, it's a pet form of Isobel, I-S-O-B-E-L, a form of Elizabeth, but in parentheses it has next to Isobel, Oath to Baal. And then I found a, a subsequent definition of Libby uh, that says it's of English and Hebrew origin and the meaning of Libby is God is my oath. And also it says it's a diminutive or you know nickname uh, Elizabeth. Okay, a couple nights later on July 31st, um, I had a vision of Elizabeth Hasselbeck, someone considered to be a conservative right-wing Christian in the mainstream media. So in this vision I saw her, she was either jumping up into the air or being thrown up into the air or being drawn up into the air, I'm not sure which, but she was wearing a long white dress and as she went up she was twirling and her dress flared out and it looked like a wedding dress. As she started coming back down to the ground, her dress went up over her head and I was concerned about her being exposed. Uh, she landed next to a man in a sports uniform who was lying on the ground, but I couldn't tell if he was dead or just injured. And I don't remember what type of sports uniform it was, but there's definitely a connection here to this bride going up, thinking she's going up, coming back down, and a, a, a sports uniform. Okay, um, on August 13th, I had another dream about a bride and a wedding. Um, it was beforehand when the bride was getting ready. The scene transitioned and I saw her coming down the aisle during the rehearsal and I was shocked to see that the wedding dress that she had chosen. It was completely sheer from the waist up. Something like this picture, only imagine this dress without the, the lace. Okay, so all she had, the, this bride in this vision, all she had covering her breasts were these little flower petals, um, the color of flesh, and sure enough, I actually these exist. I found some. They look like this. Okay, the scene changed and I was setting the tables for the reception for this wedding and I was putting two flower pots and one clock on each table to serve as centerpieces. I'm not sure what that means. Um, if you have interpretation, I would be interested to hear it. Okay, so the interesting thing about this vision is the bride was shown to me as Beth. This is a girl that I knew back in middle school who was a fraternal twin. Her hair was red 
but her twin's hair was light brown. And the name Beth is, of course, short for Elizabeth. Um, and, you know, I've talked about the redhead and other dreams and visions. So I believe uh, that this series of dreams is about the harlot bride who thinks that she's taken an oath to God, not realizing she's taken an oath to Baal. Remember the two conflicting um, definitions of the name um, Libby and Elizabeth that I saw. So she thinks she's betrothed to marry the one whom she calls God, but doesn't even know his name. She doesn't obey the commandments of Yahuwah because she believes that grace has nullified the instructions found in the Torah. Rather than observing the holy feast days that are coming up this week, starting this week, the fall ones, um, so rather than observing those as commanded in scripture, she celebrates her own holidays, such as Christmas and Easter, as demonstrated as the, by the stuffed stockings. Okay. So she thinks that the Sabbath has been changed to Sunday, but even still, she doesn't obey the commandment to rest, even then. She thinks she's getting prepared to go up in the air, but she will fall back to the ground with her skirt over her head, exposing her nakedness. So Hosea chapter two, the whole book of Hosea is fascinating. Um, if you haven't read it, please do. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all about the harlot bride. Um, I'm gonna just read a couple of verses. Um, and these are all in order, but I'm kind of skipping. Plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my woman, neither am I her man. I'm reading out of the Sefer. Um, and the, the word, uh, wife and husband are um, the root words are woman and man so okay she's not my woman neither am i her man let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts lest i strip her naked uh let's see i discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of my hand i will also cause all her mirth to cease her feast days her new moons and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. Not mine. He's not talking about his feasts. He's talking about her feasts. And I will visit upon her the days of Baalim, wherein she burned incense to them, these false gods. And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers and forgot me, says Yahuwah. So remember, I saw that bride who was getting ready, you know, putting on her jewels. Therefore, behold, this is the good news. I will allure her. I will pursue her. I will draw her to me. And I will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to her. And then verse 17, it says, and it shall be at that day, says Yahuwah, that you shall call me Yishi and shall call me no more Baali, for I will take the names of Baaliim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. So, you know, the this affair is a little bit more accurate in its translation, but um, most of you are familiar with that passage, basically saying um, that she will call me Ishi, um, which is, you know, that's the that's the Hebrew root root word for man or husband. You're not going to call me Baal anymore. Um, so to bring it back to Queen Isabella um, kicking the Jews out um, during the Spanish Inquisition and funding Christopher Columbus's voyage to establish the New World in 1492, there is a day soon coming when the anti-Messiah will similarly seek to establish a new world order. I believe it will be an Islamic caliphate that will slaughter both Jews and Christians. Um, I just finished watching uh, earlier tonight a teaching by Pastor Jim Staley from Passion for Truth Ministries that ties together many of my dreams and visions. Um, he connects some of the dots that I haven't been able to and so I'm going to strongly encourage you to watch it. It's called End of the Age, Islam, the Antichrist, and the Beast of Revelation. And um, 
I mean, there's some stuff that I haven't even shared on YouTube that, that he was talking about that I was like, oh my goodness. So he did a great job researching for that um, presentation, that teaching. Okay, so in closing, when I think about the harlot bride, I think of Revelation 3.17, where she says, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. But Yahusha HaMashiach says she doesn't know that in fact, she is wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Not that the church of Laodicea doesn't exist all over the world. Um, it, it, it most assuredly does in some form or another, but the church in America that most fits that bill, the Revelation 317 bill, in my mind anyway, is Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, led by Joel Goldstein. Recently, I was wondering if the reason that Yahuwah has been showing me football so many times in my dreams and visions over the past several years might be connected, at least in part, to megachurches like Lakewood that actually meet in sports arenas. So remember in the vision of Elizabeth Hasselbeck, when she came back down, there was either a dead or injured um, man in a sports uniform. Okay, so then last, uh, last night, I was watching a video by Annie. Um, her channel is By His Grace, where she was basically saying the same thing. And, and if you watch that video, you'll see my comment. Um, so I'm gonna link to that video uh, in the description box. And it says important message, pieces of the puzzle complete. Okay, so I'm gonna end with this. Um, 1 Peter 4.17 says, For the time has come, the judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not? The Basra of Elohim. Barukata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the